Let me tell you, Mike. I have had a productivity week like like no other I can remember in a very long time. Wow. Sometimes it feels like you have have stolen the fire of productivity from the gods and used it to drive the engine of your life for a bit. And that's just 100% how I'm feeling this week. Every day it's like, bam, bam, bam. Like I'm getting stuff done. I look back at my time tracking and it's it's like all the colors that I want, none of the colors that I don't. And I'm thinking like, oh, is there is there a way I could have spent this day better than I actually did? And the answer has been no. It's been just the world's most amazing productivity week. And doubly so, because it's coming right on the back of returning from America, usually when I get absolutely nothing done. It's just amazing. Is this forced productivity or are you just you're just riding some kind of wave? Like are you are you forced into doing a bunch of things because of some deadlines, or are you like you've just found some some second wind? I'm aware that I don't have a lot of time before another season of travel begins. Mm-hmm. But no, I wouldn't say that it's forced productivity. You're just firing on all cylinders. It's it's like, oh, I've caught this wave and I'm just I'm just surfing the wave. And it's amazing. Mm, okay. Do you have those times, Mike? Do you ever get those times? Yeah. Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah, every now and then, you can, I will have a few days where everything is going well, and I'm knocking all my tasks off my to-do list, you know, like, and you're like, yeah, this has been a good week. I have those. I can, I can relate. The thing is, though, you said right there, like, oh, you're knocking all your, all your tasks off of your list. I never feel that way, though, because there is... When you have a great week, you realize this intrinsic sadness of maximum productivity, Mm. which is being faced with the reality of just how much it is possible for a human to accomplish in one day. And that's when you have to face the fact that it is never as much as you would want it to be. (laughs) So (laughs) it's been like, it's been an interesting week of both sides of this coin where I feel like, man, I could not have spent this week any better and I feel like, oh, I got all these things done. And then, as as is the case for everyone, you think, oh, but there, there's so many things in the world that I would want to do. But now I must, I must face up to the fact that the big part of work is about the selection of work. It's, it's not really about how much you can get done. So what, are you, are you saying that, like, even though you have been so productive, it's still not enough? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah, 100%. It's like you feel like you're at maximum capacity, but you're still not doing everything. Yeah, so this week, my routine has been really great. Like, I've been getting up every morning. I've been uh, going into the office. I've been writing. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, I get it. Right, like, next, I have this dedicated, like, two-hour block of time, which is for, like, mentally complicated tasks, and I've been doing that, and then afternoons have been super busy. Like, I've recorded a bunch of podcasts this week, and I've had, uh, like, these these important meetings for my business, and, like, I've been doing all of this stuff, and it's just realizing, like, oh, man, like, the day just flew by, and I feel like, oh, okay, this is this is totally great. But for but for example, uh, a project that I referenced a while back, Project Golem, it's like, oh, I've made no progress on this particular project that past me thinks is an important thing to work on. But it's like, but there's there's no version of this week where I could have possibly done that. Or it's like, oh yeah, I've I've moved two videos forward, but I have five in the queue that I really want to be working on right now. So it's just like I just feel very, very faced mm. with that real realization about like prioritization is the most important part of the work. And it's like, yes, you can be more productive, but the the ceiling on how many different things a person can effectively do in a day is surprisingly low. Right? Where, whereas when you're not being productive, I always feel like, oh, had I only been knocking it out the park today how all the things I would have done. But like, but the reality is on super productive days, the actual number of things is much smaller than you estimate. So I feel like i have just seeing it in super, super sharp relief, having not just a perfect day, but essentially a perfect working week. And it's like, ah, I got a lot done, but it is never, ever, ever possible to get 
nearly all the things you want to get done done, even if you're firing on all cylinders. That's a harsh realization. It is. It is. Because you can't, there's no excuses anymore. Yeah. Right? The usual excuse, oh, it's because this part of my working setup wasn't perfect today, so Mm -hmm. I couldn't. There was no way I could have got everything done. If only everything was perfect, it all would have been done. And then, of course, the knowledge that I have I have never had a productive period that isn't followed by a fallow period <laughs> afterward, right? It's like, oh, you pay for these days at some point in the future. But yeah, right. it's just it's just interesting to think about. And it's just been on my mind to have gone through this like great week at a time when I really wasn't expecting a great week. And uh, I have it I have it on my list of of things for uh, my my weekly review this weekend to really seriously go through my very long project list, uh, particularly now with that in mind and try to think about like, well, how many of these things can you actually get done? Well, yeah, because what you've proven is that you can't do all of the things, right? Like it's actually not possible. Mm. So you need to maybe be a little bit more picky about what stays and what goes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But it's sad because I want to do all the things, Mike. It's just not possible. Sometimes we record an episode of this show. And then you go and do something. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, why could you not have done this before we recorded? You know, especially when we're in a travel period. And it's very obvious to tell when we're in a travel period because the release of the show starts to slow down a little bit. Are you going to complain about the f***ing pack? Is that what you're about to do here, Mike? You can't use that word, though. Why? We can't. I can't have you. I can't. I can't. You can't. I can't do that. It's not, a, you know why, I mean, you know why, uh, you have been in this country for long enough that you know why I can't allow that word. But you want to call it a butt bag instead? No, That's it's not better. a butt bag, it's a bum bag. Oh, okay. You're using a cutesy word to say butt instead of saying butt. Yeah, right? but the That's problem is, here? I also hate That's that word. That's exactly what I'm doing, Mike. Well, no, I'm yes, using but... a cutesy word to talk about your butt as well. Uh, yeah. That's why I'm talking about a f***ing pack. You know why I can't. I can't. We cannot keep doing this because I'm just bleeping it every time. You bet. You better not be bleeping f***ing pack, Mike. I'm bleeping it. I'm bleeping it every time. I, there's, there's nothing that can be said about this that will be happening every single time. So I think the only way that we can proceed forward to talk about... I'm appalled. No, we have to stop thing. right now. You can't... I will not be censored in this manner. You can't, uh-huh. you can't bleep me out when I say f***ing pack. I can. What if I say... V- We see the thing is though, what's actually going to happen is your, that joke's just never making it in. So God damn it! <laughs> this is why I don't like you having final cut of the show. Mm-hmm. I feel powerless in this situation, which is making me really angry. We're gonna have. I think the only way that we're gonna be able to get through this is if we need to give we need to give that bag just a more general name that we're all happy with. I'm very happy with Fanny Pack. I know you that's, are. That's the name of it. Right. Okay. Well then. <laughs> Look, there is no way out of this. There isn't a way out of this. Because we're never going to get past this this part of the discussion. Uh-huh. And I won't publish the episode with that word being used over and over and over again. So we need to we need to just we need to put this behind us and use Sorry, just... our creative minds to just come up with some kind of cortex sounding name to describe that small utility bag that you wear upon your front. Or your back. It could be a cortility bag. I'll go with that. Soul. Yeah. Your cortility bag. I look, I just need to get away from this conversation, right? So like whatever you said we were gonna go with. <laughs> Listeners, I'm trying to speak to you now through whatever Mike is gonna let through, right? But I'm just letting you know that whatever you heard is vastly shorter than the actual much longer, much protracted conversation that, that Mike and I had. I, I need you to know this. I need you to know this. I tried to yep. fight the good fight, but he has the final. He has the final edit here. This I would just I say this language is unbecoming of, uh, of you. <laughs> I would say. All right. So your cortility bag. So I was in the market for a cortility bag. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> which is to describe, in case people have absolutely no idea what we're talking about right now because of right. the mess that you have just heard. This is a bag mm-hmm. that you wear upon your front or your side, typically. They were very popular, I guess, in the 80s and 90s. Um, and now they are mostly considered to be one of the worst fashion faux pas that uh, an individual can commit. Um there is a very famous picture of Dwayne The Rock Johnson wearing one. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, everyone knows that picture. That's an internet meme. That is the picture mm-hmm. that I will put in the show notes so people can understand what we're talking about. But this is oh. a bag that you kind of clip to yourself and you kind of keep little trinkets and items and maybe your wallet, your Velcro wallet, which I assume you're going to get to, to go along with all of this. I mean, you're basically describing high school me now. Yes, yeah. that's correct. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, so, yes, the... I the, the the issue is I can't understand why you would want one of these. Okay, so yes, I I, I was in the market for a cortility bag, bag. <laughs> and I posted about it on Twitter, and I was I was uh, you know because I hadn't been in the market since since I was sixteen, <laughs> and yep. I think it's a very small market as well, and it doesn't help. Well, yeah. So I was like, I want to know. I want to know what the deal is. You know, what's what's the what's the best one of these a person can buy if money was no object? Right? Like, like what? Give me give me your best cortility bag, sir. And uh, I was asking people for advice, and people were leaving some comments in the Reddit and showing me all of these different models and things. Uh, yeah, because I I was interested. Um, so. Before the conversation goes much further, though, I do have to say that there has been a, a development since my wife discovered that thread on Reddit and and said, what are you doing? Yes. I, <laughs> personally, um, I was only going to let it go so far before I engaged your wife in this conversation. Uh, <laughs> because my assumption was, if you bought one of these, she wasn't aware. <laughs> Uh yeah, yeah. So that's that's basic that's basically what happened. I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased that this has been shut down. So yeah, I fa- I found out that this is a thing that against what I otherwise would want is is not going to become a regular part of my everyday wear. Every uh, day? You I wanted was, to I wear was, it every day? Well, yeah, so I was thinking uh. I was thinking about how <laughs> Look, look, all of this started because I realized that in my everyday wear, I do not have adequate storage. For what? And I would like more storage. For what? Okay, look, at, like as a man in the world, all right, what do I what do I wear? I'm going to wear jeans mm-hmm. and I'm going to wear a t-shirt. That is the minimum everyday wear. Okay. All right, like that's that's just what's what's going to happen. Yep. And if you're a guy that does not provide you a lot of storage, right? Because all I have is four pockets uh two of which at the back you know the ones on my bum are not super useful because you have to sit on them and you don't want to overload them with stuff or you become george costanza like so you really only have two pockets and these pockets are already spoken for with phone and wallet and keys and trying to shove anything else in there yep like you're you're done you're out of storage i agree and so I thought I need I need more storage. But what for though? Okay, all right. <sighs> all right. So here, here's how it started. I bought a pair of earplugs. Now, these are not squishy earplugs. They're like custom unsquishable earplugs, like a musician would get. Oh, did you have the thing poured in your ear? No, I did. I didn't have I have that done, but there was like okay. some sizing for them, right? So they're, okay. they're not like specifically for my ear, but they're not squishy. Like they have a, they have a hard part in them, mm-hmm. so they're not something that can be flattened down mm-hmm. and used. They have a volume to them, and they they come in a little case, mm-hmm. and the case is about like sixty percent the size of uh, an AirPods case, and then the little earplugs are inside. Mm-hmm. This is the item that started it all because I got these a year ago and I got them originally for my summer of traveling last year because it's like, oh man, if there's one thing that happens at conferences and events, it's stuff is too loud, right? And, and, or you always get like stuck at a restaurant that's too loud or you're in some environment where it's too loud. And I just kind of like, I kind of refuse to be in these environments without ear protection at the, at the bare minimum. And it's like, okay, this is a thing that I'm, this is a thing that I want. This is not you just being an old man. Like you have had some 
issues there, right? Like, you're not just yeah, being no. like an old fuddy daddy. Oh, this is too loud for me, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure if I didn't have constant, persistent ringing in my ears, which gets worse as I get older, I I would very well be into old man territory by now, anyway. Okay. Right? Like I would have I would have gotten here one way or the other. Right? <laughs> okay, so. okay. I was trying to like defend you, but <laughs> no, no. If 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 it wasn't that, it would be the other thing. And the other the other thing is, I just always feel like, why do people go to these places that are loud, and then mm-hmm. you can't talk, and I don't understand, and like. But we're somehow, we're all trapped here by the few extroverts who are like, oh, this will be a fun place to go. And it's like, and but I don't know. It's, there's some kind of weird collective action problem there where I, we just, we end up in this place. So anyway, I got these earplugs and they were really useful last year, but they're, they're a real pain to try to carry on me. And it's, it's not that it's a big object. It's just... It's like, oh, this is the final piece of straw on the camel's back for how much can I actually keep in my pockets comfortably where I don't feel like, oh, I've got a whole bunch of crap in my pockets because I hate the like the feeling of a full pocket. It's no good. So and, and then what happened is when I came back from travel, I, I'm just I'm aware that it's like I would love to have these things on me all the time because maybe once every six weeks or so, I'll find myself in an environment where I feel like I would wear these if I had them on me now, but I don't have them on me now, right? Because they're they're too uh, mm-hmm. clumsy and awkward to just keep on my person. Mm-hmm. And this is an item that I want to be part of my everyday minimum viable carrying items. And so this is what started <laughs> to lead me down the road of well, how do I acquire extra storage without extra clothing. And so I thought that the that the cortility bag would be the perfect item because once you open the door to a whole extra little bag of holding, then I thought, "Ooh, the other thing I can do is I can keep a, like a little camera in there because like I I have I do have this little Sony camera that I have around the house and I always think like, yes, iPhone photos are good, but even the world's smallest compact camera takes so much better photos than the phone does. And you just don't notice it until you see them side by side. And so I've always yeah. been happy, like whenever I happen to have that camera uh, around and I grab it to take a picture, it's like, oh, God, these photos are so much clearer and better and nicer than than iPhone photos. So I was thinking like, oh, I could add two items to the minimum viable everyday carry if I have a cortility bag and I can have my little headphones in there and then I can have like a small camera in there. And then I was thinking, Ooh, depending on how big it is, maybe one or two minor useful items, you know, put some, uh, aspirin in there or like whatever, like there's a couple of other things. So that's, that's where I was going with it. But apparently my dreams have been dashed about adding this to the everyday outfit. So now, now I don't, I don't really know what to do. Minimum viable everyday carrying items yeah yeah there is definitely no pre-existing uh acronyms to help you in in this uh your (laughs) m-v-e-d-c-i yeah well well, you're well you're all like lol what do you need it for and i feel like i've actually given you a good case of i would like to be able to have a few more things and what so like what what do you suggest mike what what is what is a thing that i could do i mean honestly this this is it i think that I mean, I don't really understand how small your jeans pockets are because, like, I carry my wallet. You, are you a front pocket wallet person? Yes. That's your problem. Okay. All right. Fine. Yeah, but I sw- I switched to front pocket because I don't like the unevenness in the back. Yeah, I know it's bad. I know I shouldn't do it. So I like the the only thing that 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 some <laughs> somehow works in the back pocket is I do keep. The only thing I put in there is the AirPods case has has wormed its way into my minimum viable everyday carrying objects. Why is the, look? You need to stop changing. <laughs> every time I've written it down, I've written down the letters basically every time you said it, and they're changing order. And now the words are changing. <laughs> look, everyone knows what I'm saying here, Mike. Right? Yep, There's yep, a set yep, of things yep. that you want with you all the time, and I, and these are these things. And so the AirPods just just made it in under the wire, right? Like they, they were the last things to get in before the door was closed of nothing more. 
And somehow the way they they happen to sit in my back pocket never bothers me. They're always kind of off to the side. Mm-hmm. But it's just anyway. It's. But if the the earplugs are like smaller than that, then why doesn't it work in the back pocket too? I don't know. It just doesn't. It's mm. terribly uncomfortable though. And it doesn't work with the wallet. You can't put the wallet and the earplugs in the same pocket. No, it did. Like I even tried to buy a slightly different wallet to see if I could try to squeeze the the earplugs in, and it, like it wouldn't work. What kind of wallet do you use? Do you use a bifold wallet? I bought a bunch of the different Bellroy wallets because okay. right? I've used their like super slim one for years, and I yeah. thought like, oh, let me let me try if I upgrade to the next slightly bigger size, can I get away with squeezing this additional thing? It's like no, that doesn't work at all. So like I'm, I'm still just using the Bellroy. But it's also this this dream now that I have, Mike, of mm-hmm. more storage capacity because yeah. it's it's not just about the earplugs. It's about wow, if if I had like another pocket, this would be great. And so, I, I think in a dream world, I, I've I've slowly come back to the idea, uh, a thing that we discussed. On one of the very first oh, no. episodes of the show. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> which is, which is, can I, can I make <laughs> jeans that are like cargo pants? <laughs> Just the secret pocket. Can I, can I make jeans with a secret like earplugs pocket in them? They don't need a secret pocket. I'm thinking like cargo pants have the side pocket just on on your thigh, a little bit right, above right, your right, knee. Great, great, great. great and so great, I'm, great, I'm thinking great. like, no, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Listen, listen, listen. What, what, do you, what do you mean? No, I think this is a good idea. This is the, this yeah, is yeah, my yeah, yeah. because as soon as the, like as soon as the cortility bag got shot down, yeah, I was trying to think make, about other things, and this is this my best idea. It. This won't make Why? it either. This is as bad as as the cortility bag. You can't have this huge pocket on the side of your jeans. Your wife will not allow this. Well, I was going to have two pockets, one on each side. Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right. Do you think that, that you would be able to get away with wearing cargo pants? Do you think that's something she would let you, like... Well, I don't, I don't want to wear cargo pants, though. Right, I know, but... I want to wear jeans. Yeah, but... The... So I, I want to pocket, like, a cargo pants on the jeans. The problem with cargo pants isn't, like, what they're made of. It's the fact that they're covered in pockets. Right, that's, that's, why, that's why I want those but jeans. Right, but this, it doesn't matter what they're made of. It will always look the same. Right. I think it's fine. I know you do. You thought the cortility bag was fine too. Just for the record, I, I haven't, I haven't actually run this past my wife yet. So as soon as you do, you'll be in the same situation. That's why you have to have the secret pocket. It has to be hidden. Maybe that's why I haven't felt like I really want to bring it up as an idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, See, you know, deep down, you know. Uh, but I was, I was searching the internet bag. I was, I was typing in like jeans, but like cargo pants. Um, Is that, that's the, the verbatim search. Yeah. Jeans. Yeah. But like with the, you know, with a secret <laughs> pocket in them. Yeah. Well, there are like, there are companies, there are companies that make men's trousers, like business trousers that do have secret pockets. Like this is a thing that exists. It's like, hey, you are a business monkey going into the office every day and you want to have more storage and you still have to have pants. that Like that's a thing that exists in the world, but I couldn't find anything that was like that, but for jeans. So that's why that's why I was thinking just just like uh, in the early episodes, I was thinking maybe, maybe if I bring a pair of my pants into the tailor and explain what it is I'm looking for, I can I can get what I want and then give them 10 pairs of jeans and say, make them all the same, make them all like this. And then I can carry a, an additional number of small items with me every day. In this instance, I think that's probably the best idea. Right. So you, you are behind me on this for when I bring it up. I just want to check. If you, you can, like you say, like Mike you says it's modify, okay, right? Mike's the fashion guy. If you guy can and he modify says it's okay. your existing jeans to include a pocket, which is hidden. No, oh, I don't think I can make it hidden though. Like, I think that's asking a lot you of it. Can. I was thinking of you putting can. the pocket on the outside and then it can also store more. No, 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 because you, <laughs> you just don't understand. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I don't no. see why my problems are so funny, Mike. I can't tell if you are aware of what you're asking. Like, because the pocket on the outside... I don't understand why a pocket on the outside is is such a problem for the world. I, I... Like, for a man who spends so much time wanting attention to be drawn away from him, 
I don't know why you want to do these things. Like, everyone will look at you when you're walking down the street. I feel like I explained why I want to do this. And I don't understand. Like, I wouldn't I wouldn't notice if someone has an additional pocket on their jeans. Who? Well, no, but this is the, but this is the parameters. Typically, like, an additional pocket is fine. But you want, like, a big pocket on the front, on the outside. People will notice that because you're... Yeah, on, on the side. On the side above the knee, right? Like, so it's, like, that's where I'm thinking the pocket oh. would go. Like, with outside fastenings and stuff? Yeah, like, a, well, you, yeah, you need to, you need to like, clip it closed, right? Like, if there's, a, if there's, like, a camera in there, you don't want the camera to fall out. Or when you sit down. So you need, like, a button. Yeah, like, a button on the, on the side of it. You should just buy a utility kilt and just be done with it. What's a utility kilt? <laughs> just look it up. Okay. All right. I'll make a note for the end of the show. This episode of Cortex is brought to you by Eero, the company that helps you never think about Wi-Fi again. Because with Eero, you'll never need to worry that your Wi-Fi isn't fast enough to stream movies or download the files that you want because Eero have created the Wi-Fi setup of dreams, a fast, reliable connection throughout your entire home. The second generation Eero includes a third 5 gigahertz radio, making it twice as fast as ever before. Whatever your Wi-Fi needs, Eero will blanket your entire home in fast, reliable Wi-Fi. It sits on any surface, just plug it into the wall with the included power adapter and you're ready to connect your Eero either with Ethernet or wirelessly. And the included thread radio means you can connect to low power devices like locks, doorbells and more. And they also have the tiny Eero beacon. All you need to do is plug them into the wall and expand your coverage to any room in your home so you don't have to move to a different part of the house to get the internet speed that you want. And it even includes a built-in LED nightlight with ambient light sensor as well. The Eero app lets you control the network from your phone and it's no hassle to create a shared guest network too. Plus, their customer support is phenomenal. You can call and get a hold of a Wi-Fi expert in just 30 seconds. I love the way the Aero devices look, especially the beacons. They stay out of the way and don't look strange and alien in your home. They haven't got 16 aerials poking out in all different directions. I love the guest network feature as well. It's super easy to set up a network for people when they visit, so you don't have to bother sharing all the usual passwords that you use. It's really easy to do in the app. And of course, the speed and reliability you're going to get with the Eero makes this whole thing worth it. Trust me, it really is worth it. This stuff makes Wi-Fi a breeze in your home. You can get your own Eero system, including one second generation Eero and two beacons for just $399. This is absolutely everything you'll need to get started. And you don't have to wait weeks to get hold of your new dream Wi-Fi setup. Listeners of this show can get free overnight shipping to the US or Canada when you go to Eero.com and use the promo code Cortex. That's E E R O dot com and the promo code Cortex for that free overnight shipping. Our thanks to Eero for their support of this show and Relay FM. A couple of episodes ago, you were talking about the fact that you were having trouble with your charging solutions when traveling. It's a lot. This is there's a, there's a thread here running through right now. Yeah, the thread is Gray wants to fix the problems in his life. And why is the world resisting me? That's the threat. Why is the world against yeah. you? It is a shame. Yeah. It's a great shame. Why isn't the world manufacturing USB-C peripherals for me? I don't understand. The ballad of CGP Grey. Why is my life so hard, Mike? Yeah, so you said you wanted the, the Cortex listeners to make suggestions for you, yeah, right? Yeah, I did. That, that they would go to the subreddit and make suggestions. And I said to you that you would not get what you were looking for. Right, I said you can ask for these suggestions. I feel like you're getting ready you to will get here, things. What you're doing. You will get things, and people will make lots of suggestions, but you won't get what you were looking for. And I wasn't going to bring this up, <laughs> but a couple of days after, you tweeted, and you were like, "Haha, see, I was right. I got lots of suggestions, but my my <laughs> point was never my point. I knew you would get lots of suggestions." But I knew you would not get what you were looking for, which was a way to reduce all of your cables and all of the things that you take with you just so you can charge like three or four different items. So I want to know, did you get what you were looking for? Um, okay, yes and no. Okay. Did I get what I wanted? No. Okay. I, did not, I did not get what I wanted, which was a world in which USB-C is a useful connection technology <laughs> or at least viable for everything you use right which is more what you're looking for right a way that USB-C can be like the, the universal connector it's supposed to be 
Right. Yes. Of of like I want to connect into devices. And I want to mm-hmm. connect into power sources. And one of those ends should be USB-C. So I only have to think about the attachment end, not the connected to power end. But that is not the universe that we live in. Not by far. Not if money is no object. It just, it doesn't exist. And yes, I I thought maybe, maybe somewhere on the internet there was a stone I had left unturned. And the commenters would, would find that stone and go, oh, here it is. Here's the thing for you. But no, that was not the case. However, I do have to say I was really interested in all of the comments. And I I found it super useful because between everyone who left comments in that thread, I, I feel like every possible permutation and combination of charging devices and solutions that existed in the world was presented before me in one place where I could survey them all and make a judgment. And so I I did find that discussion very useful, but no, it didn't give me the thing that I was hoping for, which is a a universe where USB-C is a viable choice. It was really interesting to read through everything, and there were were lots of suggestions where uh, people have invented uh, all sorts of, of cables where they're trying to recreate a new universal standard, which then just becomes like the XKCD comic of like, oh, there's too many standards. So we should unify them all with a new standard. Like mm-hmm. now we have mm-hmm. now we have too many standards plus one uh, where people were having these interesting magnetic connectors and just just a whole bunch of stuff. And I considered it all. And, and you know, I, it's it's not worth going through like the matrix in my mind of what are the trade offs of all of these these various things. Uh, but the end result of, of where of where I was on my first little test run trip in America is that I am still using that Anchor charger I mentioned before, the one that has a single USB-C port, and it has four USB-A ports. And I bought a bunch of wires to try to cover myself with all of the devices that I need. They're just regular USB-A to either Lightning or micro USB or USB-A to USB-C. I have all of those plus the Apple Watch charger, and, and that is the thing that I used on the last trip. And it worked pretty well um there's there's only there's only one one real problem and the problem is this that USB-C power output on that anchor brick it's not quite enough power to keep the laptop charged if Mm. you're running it at full capacity Ah, okay. Then you may need a new one. Because you're looking for a specific spec. Um, I think it's called power delivery, like PD. That's what you need. Or like there's like a, a, there's like a, or is it a different like wattage or amperage. Like it is possible to do this. Yeah, okay. No, but here, here we go, Mike. Okay. I understand that it is possible to do. But again, it's a question of minimizing equipment. Oh, it's going to be too big, right? The Anchor one will go up to 60 watts over USB-C. And if you're using the laptop to just do email and browse the internet or whatever, it will charge off of that 60 watts. But when you open up Final Cut and it's doing uh, background rendering while you're working on it, Mm. it slowly, slowly drains down. And I thought, oh, this isn't going to be a problem. Uh, This this is fine. It, It drains down slow enough that it doesn't matter. Uh, but it turned out like it was enough of a problem that the very fact that I was using that charger uh, delayed me uploading a video by a day because I couldn't re- render the thing. So that was that was frustrating. But I think I still might just live with that as a problem because the size of the brick that I would need to bring to run the laptop at full capacity like all the time is so enormous. And then it also means I now need an additional additional i need to have like an additional item of like this also needs a power adapter for wherever i happen to be so Mm. i think i think i I actually can live with that as long as now i know like oh i actually have to plan for that in advance that if i'm going to be editing for eight hours and then immediately trying to do an export like that's not going to happen i have to i have to do the export the next day um and luckily most of my videos are not like oh it needs to be up by a particular time it's like whenever um so I think that's what I'm going to end up with. But 
I'm still really sad that I don't have wires where I can just plug stuff either into the laptop or to charge it, but I feel like I'm closing in on what the minimum viable charging situation is. Although, uh, lesson learned is that I need much shorter wires than I brought, brought last time. Like, I brought longer wires than is necessary. It's like, oh, I can actually use all these tiny wires because the charger comes up on the desk. Yeah, I have a bunch of those tiny wires. Yeah. They're really, really good. Like, the Anchor makes just, like, tiny lightning ones and tiny USB-C ones. Like, I have this horrifically large battery, mm -hmm. um, and I think this battery might have that power that you want, right? That it could, But, but it's not a war-charging thing. It's, like, one of those big external batteries. Because mm -hmm. I have it for the Nintendo Switch, because it's the first battery. I think it's the Pow Anchor Power Co Core Plus 26800 or something, and it... And it will charge and, like, keep charge for the Nintendo Switch when you're playing. Hmm. Right? And it was the first battery that would do that. It was powerful enough for that. I don't know if that's powerful enough for a MacBook Pro. I don't know. But I, I, it comes in a little pouch. And in that pouch, I've just stuffed in, like, all these little tiny cables. They're really mm. good. It is funny to me that, like... and, and it, But it is exactly what I expected. What you were already doing was the best you could do, but there's just some optimizations to make to it. Because yeah. those those things that you plug into the wall, they're the best option right now. There isn't anything else that will get you what you want purely because what you're looking for doesn't exist, which is some way to unify these cables because even though USB-C is pretty great, not everyone is using it and not everyone will use it. And it's going to be years until we get to a point where people are. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said last time, I, I actually suspect that a USB-A to a mini USB cable on the other end, I, I think that might be almost unmovable out of the market. I, I feel like that's so cheap and so small and so easy compared to the more expensive USB-C that that in in 15 years, there will still be devices that use it. Well, my, my, my feeling on this is that when it will change, but when it changes, USB-C will be to uh, like USB what mini is now. Like that, there will be something else, mm -hmm. and then we have USB C and all of these things. But then it doesn't move again, right? So like your toothbrush will get USB C, but by the time that happens, there's another new universal standard. Yeah, yeah. That's the... Like it's wireless charging. Everything's wireless charging except the toothbrush, now, right? <laughs> which now has USB C. Yeah, I mean, I I do suspect that that's actually where we'll end up going. Is is the next mm -hmm. battle will be what can charge wirelessly and what can't charge wirelessly because I already find myself looking at all of my devices and thinking like, man, I wish, I wish this GoPro could charge wire. Like, I don't care how slowly, if I could just put it on a wireless charger and it would charge, I would love that just to have the option. Uh, and, th and then they're also, um, in my, in my odyssey for charging solutions, uh, people do sell these micro USB to wireless charging coil adapters. So you can like tape a wireless oh. charging coil to the outside nah. of the device nah you're okay you're okay i don't want to do that that like the chi charging stuff feels pretty awkward anyway mm -hmm. right like there's something i know it's okay but there's just something about the just oh the way it works is it's just a coil like a wire coil that's just in this thing and i'm like Ah, like I don't know enough about how the wireless charging works to feel like like it's completely okay. That's just induction with electricity. It it like it's fine. There's nothing to worry about. With I know. That. The thing is, I know it's fine, but I, it feels more like out there mm -hmm. than what we currently have. And like every now and then, and again, like I know, I know that this is irrational, but every now and then I'll like unplug a device because I'm convinced it will end up catching fire, and this could be anything. Right, but but it's like it's so subjective the way that I react to this stuff. Right, it's like I'll I'll leave my iMac plugged in all the time, but sometimes I won't leave my house with the iPad plugged in. Right, yeah, because it might burst into flames. That's what you're concerned about. Exactly, like it could just spontaneously explode. And I know that it is irrational, but sometimes it's best to just lean into those irrational fears a little bit, so you just don't fret about it all the time. Probably not, but okay. Uh, so the Qi charger stuff triggers that more for you because you think, oh, it's these two coils of of wire just laying yeah. on top of each other and also like th just because it's new right like in that i'm so used to power comes from physically plugging something into something else mm -hmm. that there's this weirdness for me and like oh you just put it on there and the power just goes in i'm like i don't like how i assume something's heating something up i just don't like it 
I don't like it. That isn't why I don't use it. The reason I don't use it is just because I, I don't find it as, as useful for me than these little docks that I already have. Um, because it, we have Qi chargers in use in this house. Adina uses Qi charging mm-hmm. because she, and she loves it. But I don't, except for this, which I thought was hilarious. There was a couple of days ago. We were going to bed. We we always like read on our phones in bed or whatever before we go to sleep. And we'd been out all day. And she was like, oh, no, I only have 5% battery. And I can't right, charge yeah. my phone. And I'm like, ha ha, here I am with my cable. And, you know, <laughs> she's just like, at, like, she'll read for a few minutes, put it down for a few minutes, read for a few minutes, put right, it down yeah, for a few minutes. Yeah. This won't help quell your anxieties at all, but... The, the way to think about what the cheat chargers are doing, this is not what they're doing, but it, it's it's close enough, is, is kind of like when you put, if you think about taking two magnets and you put one on a table and then you take the other one and put it underneath the table where the first magnet is and they hold themselves together and how mm-hmm. like, oh, you can rotate the one on the bottom and the one on the top will rotate as well. That's That's like the, that's sort of the mechanism by which you're charging the phone, right? Is is motion through the bottom coil is causing motion through the top coil. And that that's okay. that's how they're charging. You you mm-hmm. you wind up the iPhone, right? That's how that's how you're doing it. You wind it up and that's what those things are doing. Oh, <laughs> winding. I'm used to that now. Yeah. I understand yeah, the so winding. So it's, it's a way thing. to wind up the phone without having to physically connect something to the phone because you can use magnets. Support for Cortex comes from WeTransfer. 40 million people use WeTransfer to send and receive files every month. No sign-in required, just upload, send, and get back to making whatever it is you make. Since day one, WeTransfer has devoted 30% of their ad space to showcasing creative people from around the world, from musicians to photographers to illustrators to podcasters like us. So in that spirit, we're skipping the rest of this ad and getting right back to the show. WeTransfer.com. You make, we transfer. Gray, yeah, I have joined the PC Master Race. <laughs> in what capacity? I built a gaming PC. You, in, like you built it like it's done. You built it. I built it like it's done. It's behind me. Have you played games on it? Yeah. Okay, so it's really done. It's not it's like really oh, I think I think it's done. And actually, the last ten percent, which is the last three hundred percent, is still to go. You've actually played a game on it. I've played multiple games on it. It's like done, done. I've even streamed on it. Like it is, it is done i did it in a day which i cannot believe wow i did i thought this was gonna i was preparing for like a four day cold sweat situation right you know like when when you're trying to do something like this with technology and it doesn't work and you start to get all frustrated with it right and then Mm -hmm. like four hours pass and you need to change your t-shirt right like that's what i thought i was gonna have for the best part of a week but i did it in a day and it's because i prepared i prepared significantly and i and i got it done and i have a gaming pc um, I know people are going to ask me this because people are already asking me this. They're going to say, what's your parts list? So I'm going to put a link in the show notes to my PCPartPicker.com part list because well, everyone <laughs> wants to know what your parts are because if you're in this world, it's right. like, oh, what processor did you get? What, you know, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> I would ask, why have you done such a thing? But for anyone who has played games on a Mac, the answer is obvious why you have done such a thing. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's more if you want to stream on a Mac. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing a bunch of game streaming recently. If you remember, like we were talking about this a long time ago, and I bought something quick so I could stream with my Nintendo Switch. But overall, it was just bad. The Mac could just not do it the way that I wanted. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing some streaming recently, I was streaming some Steam games. And I set up OBS. OBS is this open source broadcasting software. That's what OBS stands for. Um, And it is used across the industry. There are other products, but OBS is a very good... Okay. OBS is a very powerful application. (laughs) OBS is a minefield to try and understand. You've tried to use OBS, right? Uh, Yes. I I used it and then abandoned it. Yeah. I, I I could not get it to work the way I needed it to work on a Mac. I got it to work on the Mac by having a like close to two hour like Google Hangout session um, with a guy called Dan who really helped me out a lot, a lot, mm-hmm. and got it to a point where I was able to stream on the Mac at like 1080p, 60 frames a second. It looked great. When I installed OBS on the PC, it said, "Hey, do you want us to just check your settings for you?" <laughs> Done. <laughs> it did it. And it is perfectly set up, and it looks better than it ever did on the Mac, of course, right? But 
that's one of the big differences between the using it on a PC and using it on the Mac is OBS sets itself up. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> right? And like if you've ever tried to use OBS on a Mac, you are now like punching the screen because yeah, yeah. like trying to set OBS up on the Mac is a test of every ounce of patience you have. Oh yeah. That's that's, that's like I don't I don't feel like a a dumb technically illiterate person and i failed in this task to get it to work the way yep. i wanted it to <laughs> so it's it's wonderful it works perfectly but i i am so happy with what i've done here but this 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 happy moment it was it was hard fought mm-hmm. this is a really difficult thing to do to build the pc you mean to get from I want a PC to I have a PC. Right. If you are not familiar with this. And 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 you're not buying it from Dell or whatever. <laughs> Dell's, does Dell still exist? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, they do. Their, their PC stuff is all Alienware for gaming now. And they do some other stuff as well, but like they have a whole range. Yeah. Like if, if um, I had, like if, if you told me like you need to get a, a PC for gaming, uh, what are you going to do? I'd be like, uh, Alienware? Like, that, that'd be the only yeah, word that the would pop Corsair in my head. Or the Corsair 1. That was one that we were talking about a long time ago. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I have a bunch of Corsair parts in my PC, which I've realized I've not given a name to yet, and I feel like I need to do that. There mm. needs to be a name for my PC, but I don't know what it's going to be yet. So I've been wanting to do this for a while, and uh, a friend of ours, a, a wonderful YouTuber by the name of Austin Evans, he's real. He is very, very good at this kind of stuff, and he does PC builds. And a few, like about a month ago, he did a streaming PC build, and I was like, okay, this is it, right? This is what I want to do, right? Like I want to build a streaming PC. Mm-hmm. He's made a video talking about how <laughs> to do it. I feel like I've got to do it. Right. Um, I didn't like the case that he used, so I, I, I asked him for some out for recommendations. He made the recommendations, and then I started buying the parts. Mm-hmm. That was a long process, uh, which took two weeks to assemble the parts because, I don't know, say it was like 16 or 17 discrete boxes that yeah. needed to be delivered. Now, imagine dealing with delivery companies for 17 discrete oh. items. <laughs> I have had no, you. things go missing. I have had uh, things go get cancelled on the day that they were dispatched. Right. I have had multiple items get stuck in warehouses and I've had to cancel things because like I kept planning into my week when I would build this thing. Mm -hmm. So like I would be like, right, okay, on Tuesday, I'm going to build it because the last thing arrives Monday. Didn't arrive Monday, it comes Wednesday. So like I had been, I was at a point where I was ordering something at one point. They would say it would be too late. I would cancel it with them, order it with someone else. Like it has been wild because at a certain point I had 15 boxes in my office and I was dying to build it, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, what place can get it to me tomorrow? What can I do here? What can I do there? And then um, the last day I was getting my last piece to arrive, which was my case. And I thought to myself, because people had already started to ask me because I, I posted a picture of my motherboard on Twitter. They're like, oh, what is your part? Like, what, what is your part list? So I found PC Part Picker and I started entering everything. PC Part Picker has a very useful tool called the compatibility check. Ah. Where they look at all of your parts and tell you if one of them's not compatible. Um, I I accidentally bought the wrong case, which was the last thing that I was waiting for. It had taken me close to a week to get the case to be delivered with three different orders with three different companies. And the whole time I was buying the wrong one. (laughs) I have one of these cases just sitting over there because there was nothing I could do to stop the last delivery. So that thing needs to go back at some point. But I also accidentally (laughs) bought two gaming cards, video cards as well. So I have an extra video card in the office too um all of these need to be returned at some point but then i overnighted a different case which is much bigger um but even though it's much bigger it's probably ended up being for the best because i then had a lot of space to build because originally i was going to put this gaming pc on the same desk i have a corner desk that i have my imac on so i was going to have them both there and as I was go- and then like I bought some stuff like I bought uh, I bought an ultra wide monitor but I got a 25 inch one because I was like well I don't want it to take up too much space that kind of thing 
And then I was looking at Mega Office. And I realized, I think I've sat on the sofa in Mega Office twice in a year. Hmm. So, Gray, I am calling you from Mega Office 2.0 because Mega Office 2.0 stands for there are two desks now in Mega Office. Goodbye, sofa. Sofa is gone. I'm sad that your vlogging sofa is gone, but you know the world. The world evolves. The world changes. If you if you don't have two desks in an office, do you even have a desk? Probably not. You know, because it even applies to desks. It does. Two is one. One is none. Yeah. In both of my offices, I have two desks. So yeah, I completely agree with you. It's the only way to roll. It's the only way to roll. I now have two desks in Mega Office 2.0, and one of those desks is dedicated to my gaming PC. That's cool. One other thing that I did that I didn't know that I'd done was I bought RAM with LED lights in it. And I thought to myself, <laughs> that's ridiculous. But what I didn't know, Gray, is the AMD processor that I bought comes with a fan. The fan has LEDs in it too. <laughs> I hope you got a clear case so that you can see all the LEDs. My case has a big glass side to it. Well, there you go. There you go. It, like, it's not a gaming PC unless you have a window into which you can see all the little LEDs blinking. Exactly. Because here's the thing. I wasn't planning on having LEDs in the case specifically, but I did want to lean into some of the fun and ridiculousness of gaming PCs. So I bought my keyboard and mouse. I bought the Razer ones that like they have all those rainbow lights on them. Oh, yeah. Right, because yeah, I yep, was yep. just like, I don't want this to be boring, right? Like, you know, it, there is all this stuff available. Let's lean into it a bit. And then as I'm building this thing, I'm realizing everything, like my motherboard has LEDs on it, my fan has LEDs, <laughs> and my RAM. This is like a party in here. It's incredible. And you can sync your keyboard and mouse's LEDs together, but also to Philips Hue bulbs. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So I have, and I, get, I will put a link in the show notes. I did, I did like an Instagram story, but I've saved it. So there's part of it. You can see my keyboard is like changing color. And I have this little hue lamp that is also changing color in sync with it all. It is amazing. It's so ridiculous, but I love it. I love it because it's so wild. Yeah, no, that, that is super ridiculous, but it crosses over into the world of fun. Mm-hmm. And it it feel it feels like maybe you need to game while eating some special food as well. Like I feel like maybe you need to lead into this all the way, Mike. Like Mountain Dew and Doritos. Yes, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like a lot of Mountain Dew and Doritos is exactly what I mean. Because uh, it sounds like you're having a crazy time over there with your Hue lights and your million LEDs. Uh, that's, that's great, though. I'm like, I can't believe you got this whole thing done since the last time we spoke. I know. I got to say, like, it's it's impressive for someone who's just been working on the Macs forever. You just buy these sealed boxes. But did, like, did you enjoy the process of putting it together? All right. So I have never done anything like this. I changed RAM once in an iMac. Mm-hmm. through the IMAX RAM door, right? Yep, I remember that door, yep. So that is as much as I have ever done. So I was really nervous about this. There were so many things that I could do to screw this up. And it seems like this stuff has gotten a lot easier, but it's not easy. Like, you couldn't just deliver me these parts and I could just do it. Like, that's not how this is going to work. So I watched a bunch of YouTube videos I took a lot of notes, like I worked out step by step, how was I going to do this, right? Like what Mm -hmm. was the order I was going to go in? And then it was like a three hour process of looking at these notes, cross-referencing four different instruction manuals and working out like this connector, where does it go, right? Because this place just tells you to plug it into this thing but not all motherboards are the same. So you have to find where that is on your motherboard. And like I had to, and it it was difficult and like working out about the power supply, like what needs power? Like, what am I looking for that requires power in this? Like, and what plugs do I use? And it was all like, it was just a case of me with all of the instruction manuals and taking my time, I was able to do it all. And I only made one mistake. The fan that goes on my processor, I put on in the wrong orientation like Mm -hmm. i had to like flip it 180 degrees right i just put it backwards but that was the only thing and it seems fine Um, i I was very careful when i was taking it back off again but when i turned it on and it posted (laughs) i was elated 
like I, I was so proud of myself that I was able to do this. And you should be. Because I, I, I was. Like, I've been thinking of this as like, it's almost like a rite of passage at this point. Mm -hmm. Because I, I am a person whose life is in technology. Like, I talk about technology every day. It's what I do. But I've never done anything like this, even remotely like this. Like Everybody that I know has done something, right? Either they used to work at an Apple store or they have their own home server or like they've wired Ethan. I've never done anything like this, like anything like tricky with hardware or like a hardware project that has required me to do something. But like I built that computer with my own hands and I feel like... I, I didn't want to say this, but now I'm getting so excited, I'm going to say it. I feel more affinity for that PC than I have any Mac in like five years. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's, the, that's the effect of making the thing yourself. Like, I'm, I'm not the least bit surprised about it. I understand now why everyone was telling me this for so long. Like, don't buy, you must build. This is like mm -hmm. everyone has been telling me this, and I'm like, oh, but well, that seems like so so much hard work. But like, that's my PC. Like, I picked all the parts out, I made all the mistakes, and then I put it together and I made it work. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I troubleshooted what needed to be troubleshooting. Like, I'm dealing with drivers. I hate drivers, but I'm dealing with them and I'm making it work. Right? Like, I'm fixing the problems that are coming up. I'm like patching the leaks. You know? Like, I'm mm -hmm. I'm yep. I'm dealing with it, and it's my project. Like an iMac, you go to Apple.com, you click three boxes and it arrives and you plug it in and it's done. And right. here's the thing. For my work, that's what I want. Like, right, yeah. I'm using an, an audio uh, tool, right? Like a, an audio box, right? Because I, I, I have a headset, a really nice headset that I'm using for my gaming PC. For some reason today, I installed a Windows update and then that just stopped working and the driver wouldn't work. And I had to go back like three driver iterations to, for some reason. And now it works. When I plug mm -hmm. this into the Mac, I don't need to do anything. Nothing. It just works. I just, as soon as I plug it into the Mac, I can select it in my audio apps, right? I can select it in Skype and it's done. But for this thing, it like you have to install all this software, troubleshoot the software. And then you get like when you go into the input lists, it's there three times. Why is it there three times? I have no idea, right? It's so much more complicated. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, the, the graphics quality that this thing outputs, Gray, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I, I can play like everything on Ultra, right? Like all my graphics settings are automatically getting set to Ultra on the games that I'm playing. And it right. looks incredible and i today just opened up obs i turned on the, my streaming just to test it done 1080p 60 frames a second no problem it's a it's a great thing to build your own pc and yep. it's even better to build, do it in the modern world where you then get to see graphics so beautiful they mm -hmm. could they could make a grown man shed a tear <laughs> right because <laughs> that's that's not something you're seeing on your standard mac no. anytime soon no <laughs> Like I, I'm just I, I absolutely love it. Like I, I've never generated more recycling in my life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because every one of those seventeen boxes came in another box. Right. Which yep. had a bunch of packing paper in it. It's got to have the packing paper. But I, I absolutely love it. I keep look. I keep turning around and looking at it. it it's awesome, man. I'm, I'm so, so, so pleased that I did this. So is this the is this the start of Mike, the live streamer? Yeah. I think so. I mean, I play video games a bunch anyway, and I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm making playing video games more, uh, like, especially publicly as a part of what I do, because I enjoy it, and I like that experience. And now mm -hmm. I have incredible hardware to help make it even easier. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say this thing. I'm going to say it before. I'm going to say it again. Go listen to Playing for Fun and subscribe to our Twitch uh, channel which is playing for Fun FM. There will be links in the show notes. That's where you'll be seeing the majority of my game streaming. We better be able to see those LEDs while you're streaming. I'm going to I'm gonna find a way to make that happen because this is the thing. Like People have asked us for this. Like You should have yourself in it. And this was a thing that I just knew I was never going to be able to do with the Mac. Like It was just never going to be a thing that I could make work like reliably. But yeah, I'll set up a camera and, and so I'll, I'll be on the stream too at some point. That's like a thing that I, I will do. 
I don't think you heard me. I didn't ask for you on the stream. LED camera or GTFO. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Casper. Cortex listeners are invited to take advantage of Casper's competitive limited time Memorial Day sale offer. Casper is the place to shop for Memorial Day mattress savings this year. They'll sell directly to you, eliminating all the added costs and saving you money at the same time. You can start your summer off right by choosing the internet's favorite mattress this Memorial Day, and you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep on it trial. And one of the greatest things about Casper is if you're not completely satisfied find their returns are hassle-free. Casper has three amazing mattress lines to choose from. They have the original Casper, the innovative Wave, and the streamlined Essential. The breathable design of each mattress helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night. One of the best things about Casper is they're going to deliver it to you in a box that's manageable. You can get it up your stairs, you can put it in the elevator, whatever it needs to get to your home or to get to your bedroom. It's super simple. You open it up and it's really lovely to just lay it down, open it up, and it will breathe to life and then you will be able to sleep comfortably and cool every single night they have just the right blend of all this good mattress stuff you're gonna need to make sure you're gonna feel comfortable every single evening trust me you'll lay down every night and you will feel nice and comfy in your casper mattress for a limited time visit casper.com savings and receive 10 percent 10 percent of your order with any mattress purchase this special offer expires on may 29th 2018 terms and conditions Supply that is casper.com slash savings for 10% off any order with a mattress purchase until May 29th, 2018. Our thanks to Casper for their support of this show. The next time that me and you are going to talk, we will be probably face to face again for our WWDC discussion. We're both going to be at WWDC again this year. Yeah, I mean, we might record in separate. Hotel rooms. No, so. it worked great. It worked great last time. Everyone can see it because one year later, you published the vlog that you've been working on very hard for 365 days of work on this project. <laughs> you make it sound so bad when you say it like that, Mike. <laughs> so you can go now uh, and get ready for this year by watching last year. And you see me. I I am uh, very honored to make a vocal appearance on your YouTube channel. Yep, yep. <laughs> there I am. I did enjoy all the comments from people who briefly thought they had somehow missed this year's WWDC <laughs> <laughs> when the video came out. <laughs> like, holy hell, how did I? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's really good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It's it's like oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna warp time through my vlog. <laughs> I think you made the right decision because I'm assuming you haven't been working on it for a year. But after six months, you may as well wait twelve months. Yeah, that's that's basically what it was. Yeah, I was essentially done with it in November. Mm -hmm. But it, like, I never had any intention to publish it quickly. <laughs> like that was not the idea. Sure. And it's just like a tinkering hobby kind of thing. So, yeah. But it's like I was basically done in November and then I didn't touch it until like the month before. I was thinking like, oh, it's it's coming around again. Let me actually get this all the way done and, and published. Yeah, because uh, I did sort of toy with the idea of putting it up in November or December. But I thought like it just feels dumb. Like it feels yeah. dumb to upload it in the winter. Uh, and so I thought like I'll just wait a while longer. And then... After I put the dragon video up, I felt like, oh, this is a good time to put up something, one, not super serious, and two, not about death. So that's why I put it up. And I was like, oh, I'll put the vlog up now. It's like, <laughs> oh, I've been away for, for three or four months. Here's a vlog from last year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, you could go and watch that and you can see you can see what our arrangement is. Just Just two guys sitting around a hotel dining room table. And we'll probably do the same again. Yeah, with a million wires. That, so many like, when wires. When you record in person, there's so many wires on that table. I didn't use it, but there's an overhead shot that I had recorded of just what the table looks like because it's crazy. Like how, how many cables are running everywhere when you need to record in person in a hotel room? It's just like, ooh, it's a big spaghetti mess. But we, we got through, we made it through, and we'll do that again because that was vastly better than the year before of us recording in the same hotel in separate rooms. Um, it was much better to sit and look at each other in the eyes as we talk about computers. Okay, we'll do it in person. You said at the time, and it yeah. was a really good uh, point.
point that you made that 2017 felt like Apple's apology year where everybody mm. got their thing. They got the thing that they wanted, you know? We got new mm-hmm. iPads. Um, there were new MacBook Pros. There was the iMac Pro. Um, there was a bunch of different software enhancements all across the board. Everyone got their thing. You know, like, oh, you want VR support on the Mac? Well, we're working on that. And the, and if you want eGPU, you want to have an external GPU? Oh, we're doing that. Like, stuff you never would have expected. They did a bunch. So I am wondering if we can try and think about or, you know, maybe try and make some rough attempts at trying to understand what we think 2018 will be. If 2017 was the year of apologies, what's 2018 going to be all about? Oh, I've I've got the name for 2018 already. Go on then. All right. And oh, okay. So it's going to sound like a joke, but it's, it's also a serious name. So I think that 2018 for WWDC is going to be the year of tumbleweeds. Right, I think it's going to be a very quiet WWDC in terms of features and things. It's going to be it's going to be pretty sparse up on that stage, kind of like uh, it was. I was it iOS ten that had messages twenty sixteen. Yeah, yeah, like. 2016 was bad for me because that was when we were doing our live show, right? And I hadn't adequately planned for no content. <laughs> yeah, never again. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Obviously, they didn't, but I, I, I felt like Apple personally screwed me that year. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, it's, I'm going to do something that's live and there's nothing to talk about. Well, they're not going not gonna to fool me twice. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's the thing. I think it's going to be a tumbleweed year. But I I am hoping that that could that could actually be a good thing for this year's WWDC. So that that's kind of my thought for what the year might be. Do you agree? Do you have a different perspective on it? I thought that it was going to be completely tumbleweedy, and then mm-hmm. there had been some rumors about this uh, project called Marzipan, which was basically going to become this way to create iOS apps on the Mac, effectively, like in to, in, in the most simplistic terms. Mm-hmm. But then there's been a lot of contradicting rumors about like, yes, that's happening, but do not expect it this year. So now I am back on the, yes, this is going to be a very quiet one this year, in so much as that for all of the shows that I'm going to be doing, I'm already making some plans for backup content. Yeah, yeah, I'd have I'd have backup content. Yes, don't worry. Keep it right in your Cortility bag so you can pull it out at any moment when yes. you're doing the show because mm-hmm. you are going to need it. Because uh, I did not make that plan in 2016 and it ended up being a problem for me. But so this mm-hmm. year I will I will not make that. Fool me once, Apple. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just getting ready for that. I don't think it's going to be nothing. I think that there's going to be some interesting stuff. But I, it's not going to be like last year. And I think that it's going to be way more like 2016. But mm-hmm. this doesn't stop me from wanting things, no matter what I think. Mm-hmm. And so I think that we both wanted to to talk about some things that we hope to see, at least, coming yeah. from WWDC this year. And I would say for both of us, these are mostly like expectation managed things, right? Like I think that we, we both, like, I mean, looking at the lists that we've got here and like the things I know I want to talk about, I'm not going to mention stuff that like, oh, I really want brand new iPad OS. Like, uh, you know, I'm not being silly. Like, I'm, I'm understanding within the remit of what I think the year is going to be and kind of setting my expectations even that way. Mm-hmm. So do you want to start? Like, what kind of things are you hoping to see? Yeah, I, I do want to start because th- there's really one thing that... uh listeners of the show will know for me has been just a, a really long standing deep frustration with iOS in particular that i i really hope will be addressed this year i think there may be good reason it might be addressed this year and while we are trying to manage our expectations i, I think i think i might flip out a little bit if it's not done this year. And that is improvements 
to the notifications and the do not disturb system on iOS. Mm -hmm. Like if, if there is one thing that is the biggest source of frustration over many years for me, it is, is this combination of two things and, and how they interact. And, uh, it's just deeply inadequate. It's buggy. It's poorly designed. It's very frustrating. And I remember the first WWDC after the Apple Watch came out, you and I were so confident that that was going to be the time Apple was obviously going to rework how their notifications and do not disturb system work. We're like, oh, obviously, once you own an Apple Watch, it makes so clear all yep. the all the limitations of the system and how it isn't good. And they must have just been waiting until the Apple Watch came out to do it. And we were like, 100%, this is going to be fixed and improved. And here we are, like, Four years later, and there has been nothing. If anything, it has arguably gotten worse over time. It's, it's, it has categorically gotten worse. There is no argument. Yeah. Like, they removed the application sorting, so everything's just in one huge, messy list. It's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely terrible. And I was trying to put my finger on, like, how to summarize one of, one of the frustrations that I have in particular. And I realized a lot of it comes from, like, like even the... The way Do Not Disturb works, I realized this is a system that is designed for meetings, right? for someone who's going to a business meeting. And it's like, while I am in my business meeting, I want the phone to just be silent in my pocket. And then when the business meeting is over, I'm going to go back to regular life. I would also throw in there sleeping. I think it's for those two things, meetings and sleeping. Yeah, meeting and sleeping, right? But like, it's like you have almost functionally turned the phone off in a sense. Mm -hmm. right? That's like, that's how it will act. And it's like we, people just use their phones for so much. It's crazy to me that there's really only one level here where it's yeah. like nothing or everything. And th it's... I mean, this is a case where it's like if you've ever seen someone have an Android phone and show you what their notification and do not disturb stuff can do, it makes Apple just look it, it makes it look like they are 10 years behind and still doing the first thing that a guy suggested in yeah. a meeting. And they've and they've never rethought it since then. And they added one thing, which is do not disturb while driving, which frankly feels like that that thing that they touted as a big feature was somebody's like weekend project that they did as a passion project at Apple. And they're like, oh, I have the code so that if you're connected to the Bluetooth of your car, it turns on do not disturb. Oh, great. We can hold that in really easily. One of the things that I'm, I'm very aware of is I feel like do not disturb. It's, it's this concept of I want the phone to not disturb me. I want my iPad to not disturb me. And one of the things that means is the way their system currently works is you can be doing something like I have do not disturb on on the phone and I'm reading a book, but because the phone is like, oh, but you're on and looking at the screen, like it'll let some notifications roll right through. And it's like, maybe that's not what I want right now. Like, I don't want this idea that the phone is off or on. You can stop that, but then it's just, it's another binary. So you can either have it show nothing when it's unlocked or still show you notifications when it's unlocked. But like, it's still just a binary off or on, which is still not, it's not enough for this. This is like an area where you can allow granularity. Yeah, you, you have to allow granularity. Uh, it gets, it's the number one thing. Like I've, I've, you know, I mentally make this distinction between like notifications that are internal to the phone, like things that I have set up to help my life run, and then like the external world. And I, I make a mental distinction between those things. Like they're just... Everybody's going to use their phones differently. Everybody's going to want different kinds of things for when they want to be disturbed, who they want to be disturbed. Like, it's still crazy to me that there you can't have, a, like, meaningful separations of your iMessages. Like, everybody is just the same level of, of notification on iMessage, which is nuts. Um, it, it's the real, it's the thing that for me is is the real biggest genuine frustration with the device that it's mind-blowing to me that it has been a, been a, able to linger in this state for as long as it has and i'm hoping because this year is really the year where 
Uh, all of the companies are feeling this pressure about how we use our devices and and how humans manage their attention that even if Apple wasn't in January planning yeah. to do this at all, and that two months ago mm -hmm. they realized if we are the only company that doesn't announce this, it looks bad. Because Apple should have been the first to this. Especially because they're the ones under fire. Like they're the ones that like the media focuses their attention on when talking about this stuff. That like it's the iPhone that's ruining the way that people yeah. live their lives. And it's it, like it's so directly in Apple's wheelhouse and, and like it's it's crazy making to see Google give a presentation where they're like we really care about how the phone steals your attention away and we have all of these tools so you can manage your notifications and, and like and it's like Apple should have been the one to do that years ago like if you had to if you had to pick which of the major companies is going to be the most concerned about how your phone steals your attention away it's like clearly it should have been Apple um so that that's why I feel like I I kind of can reasonably hope for and expect this because it's not just a personal desire, but it's also peer pressure from other companies mm -hmm. that like you really have to have something cobbled together for this. Otherwise, it's going to look terrible that you still have your your useless, useless, useless notification and do not disturb system. So that that is like in many ways, that is my number one by a factor of 10 thing for WWDC and everything else is like oh stuff I've thought about and that I like but that is the one that if it's not there for me I'll really feel like oh god not another year of this nonsense yeah I am in complete agreement with you I've wanted this for a while anyway and I've been making some changes to my setup recently where I'm not using do not disturb as heavily as I have had in the past and mm -hmm. I am mostly unhappy with the way that do not disturb means that literally every single notification can come through unless I go in and turn them all off. But that isn't what I always want to do. I don't want them all off all the time. I just want some of them off some of the time. Like yeah. and and you know, like devices being more aware of each other and how affecting one thing on one device should affect things on another device. Like this is stuff that they should be working on. And really, I mean I you know, I roll my eyes at a lot of the type of discussion around some of this stuff, but Apple 100% should be doing something better with notifications and how certain companies can send things to me. And I don't think that the that this should be 100% on me as an individual to go in and turn everything on and off. I would really like, like, tiers of importance, you know? Like, maybe I'll get a notification from a game, but it shouldn't be giving me a banner. And I shouldn't be the one that has to, like, go in and manually change all of that. Like, th mm -hmm. there, there should be way better management of the way that applications are allowed to get in contact with me. And there should be way more based upon the intent, like, you know, how you're mentioning, that there should be, like, a prioritization, I think, with certain applications mm -hmm. and certain types of applications. Um, and I think this is well within their power to do something like this. You know, notifications from Apple have been mostly the same since they've been introduced in, like, iOS 4. Yeah. They have really, really done a bad job of this. And I think the reason that they are coming under fire is because they brought this in and then just left it alone. And it's mm -hmm. really time that they need to do this. This needs a big, big overhaul. And this is the perfect year for it because, you know, Google just basically stood on stage and made a huge song and dance about this at Google I.O. About, mm -hmm. like, you know, the way that they're thinking about the way that people use their devices and their digital well-being and stuff like that. And they, I mean, their notification stuff is already really good and they're adding even more do not disturb features and stuff like that. And oh, yeah, like even if Google hadn't announced anything new, they, they still feel like they're, Mm -hmm. light years beyond apple's mm -hmm. system right you know as it as it currently stands before even any of their new stuff rolls out so that, that's why it's like if if apple could even get to where google was on this i'd be thrilled <laughs> um but I, I also just find it interesting that you know you and i use our devices in in very different ways and for both of us this yep. is a huge issue and and we're on the extreme ends of this where it's like you get a lot of notifications and I'm always trying to pare down to the minimum viable number of, of notifications. And on both ends of the spectrum, we're like, this system is useless. <laughs> right? Because it's, it's not it's good for really anyone. Bad. It's not built yeah. for any human being. Yeah. Because it is built for 2008 or whatever, 2010. Yeah. 
It's not mm-hmm. built for 2018, and that's what they need to do. Yeah. Um, I would like to see new iPad hardware. Um, I don't mm-hmm. expect we're going to get a lot in the front of iPad software this year, which, and I am happy to make the trade-off of we get big iPad enhancements every two years as long as the hardware keeps getting better. Do you mean like an alternating schedule where each year you're getting software or hardware? Like, is that is that what you mean? I am happy with that, but they need to get into that. I mean, you know, this would be new hardware two years in a row, but the hardware oh, had gotten right, really course, old yeah. before that point. Yeah. So, but like, I would be happy if they started this year with like hardware this year, no software next year, software and no hardware. And I would be happy with that going, kind of going forward. I would like to see bug fixes for certain things and some things cleaned up here and there, but I would like new iPad hardware. You know, I want new cases and thinner bezels and face ID and all that kind of stuff. That's what I'm looking for. Um, and that's something that I really hope that they do. And there isn't really much in the way of supporting this, but I do I do genuinely believe that we will see new iPad hardware um, on stage. My next biggest one is going to be... There are many things that I could say here, but I'll, I'll just put it under this category of improvements to the Apple Watch software, because th- this is an area where it's not remotely as bad as, as notifications, but I've, I feel very much that Apple released watch os they did a redesign in watch os 2 and from watch os 2 until watch os 4 i couldn't tell you anything of significance that has changed and i i feel like it's uh it's like this is this is the year where maybe we could have some updates to this some some features that could be added like more customizability with watch faces i'd really love to see that and I'm I'm kind of hoping for it because if I was a a betting man, I would say that this might be the year that Apple does something different with the physical design of the Apple Watch because I feel like last year they got the cell radio into it, and so then that feels like okay, the Apple Watch is a complete device, and now now Apple can maybe start their uh, endless obsession with thinness and smallness or change the case, and so. I'm I'm kind of hoping like ooh maybe there's a big rework of Watch OS along with a new design released later in the year. So I I feel like if they if there's big changes in Watch OS that might be a good sign that there's also going to be changes in the look of the Apple Watch this year and I feel like if I had to bet this feels like it's the year to do it if they're going to do it anytime soon. Every year there is a there's something that happens at WWDC where you can look at it and it seems out of place. Mm -hmm. Like when they introduced what was called size classes so that... Yeah, size classes. Like like that iPhone apps could be a larger size, you know, like, oh, maybe you should not think about these in exact dimensions, but in kind of like pie in the sky dimensions. And what that meant was a bigger phone was coming and it didn't make sense (laughs) with with what was currently available at that time. But everybody could go, ah, there's your confirmation of a bigger phone. Um, And I expect that there will be something in watchOS 5 that doesn't make sense with the current Apple Watch so much. Um, but will make way more sense if you're thinking about it as what will the future of the Apple Watch look like. Yeah. Or again, like always hold out for more customizable watch faces. I feel like that like that is still the biggest thing that's holding mm-hmm. the Apple Watch back. And, uh, you know, no, no matter how great of a designer Johnny Ive may think he is with watches, uh, people get bored simply with having to look at the exact same thing for four years. <laughs> and it's like at the at the very least from a fashion perspective like could we get some more genuinely customizable options on the apple watch um i feel like that's really holding it back and i'd, I'd love i'd love to see the ability to you know let the software express the capabilities of this device because it feels like of any of any product that i own the apple watch by far feels like it's the one that is most hobbled by its software limitations versus its hardware. And so that's why it's like, man, I'd really love to see some improvements here. What else are you looking for, Mike? About a year ago, Apple bought the team that makes one of our favorite iOS apps, Workflow, which is the app that allows for automation on iOS by chaining actions together from apps to apps and with web APIs. Use it every day, dozens and dozens of times a day. And it's not dead. 
Um, we were worried it was going to be dead. We, they have not been updating it with as many large features that they had in the past, right? There's not been like huge updates, but they have been improving it and making bug fixes and, and doing little things here and there. I would love to see this year, why did Apple buy Workflow? Yeah, yeah, that's very good. Like something. I want to see something where I can point at it and be like, ah, there it is. And what mm-hmm. my hope is, is that like inbuilt into the system, a bunch of different ways to have applications interact with each other, like some kind of scripting, some kind of like really easy to use, like customizable things that you can do. I could very easily see this tie into something like Do Not Disturb, where you're dragging around certain chains of items to be like, this is good, but this is not good. And, you know, like if then statements and stuff like that. Um, I would really mm. like to see a lot of that stuff find its way into iOS. Wow. I never even dreamed of something like workflow plus notifications plus do not disturb. It's like, oh, wow, that would be that would be just like all my dreams come true. I'd never thought of it until I just said it. And now I'm convinced <laughs> that's what they're working on. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, man, I can't wait to drop a bubble that, that says like iMessages, but not on Thursdays between mm-hmm. three and six. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that'd be wonderful. Um, but whatever it is, I want to see some idea as to why apple thought it was important to hire this team Um, and even more so to let the workflow app continue to be an app that exists Mm -hmm. yeah i agree i think that that's a really good one that's a really interesting one uh yeah and and i i too would be very happy to see something like that instead of the workflow team just you know their man hours getting absorbed into the behemoth that is apple and then never having any idea why Mm -hmm. they're there or not seeing any clear improvements All right, now, I have something a little bit different for something else that I would like to see at WWDC. Now, I will say up front, this will never happen in a million years, but I would love to see it. This is what this section's all about, right? Like, we can just talk (laughs) about some stuff. It might happen, it might not, but at least we said it. So then if it does, we look like geniuses. (laughs) Yeah. So I want to see Apple kill the touch bar. I really strongly think that the touch bar on the MacBook Pros is a total dead end and a total waste of developer time and attention. So here's the thing. I think it uh, will happen. I think that will happen. I don't know if it's going to be this year. It might be the year after. But I think that it is very clear at this point that that piece of technology will not break outside of the MacBook Pro. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that they have not put a lot of effort into it since it came out. Part of its existence is for Touch ID, but Touch ID has already been replaced. Oh, yeah, yeah. I understand why you would say, like, oh, we don't think, I don't think they're going to get rid of this. I think that they will. Now, okay, so now what I mean here, though, is, you know, it's like what you don't want is when something when something is in pain, you don't want it to linger around. Mm-hmm. Right. You want you want a nice, clean end. And so I think a bad thing to do is to just have it linger in that way and to have it be a thing that's just sort of there and they don't put a lot of effort into it. So the main functionality it provides me is when it crashes as I try to change the volume on my computer and then the volume buttons don't work until I reboot the machine. Um, I, I I really think... Like they don't need to say it on stage, but what what would fill my heart with joy is if, is if Apple said, you know, as as a pure crowd pleasing moment, they said, "Hey, we have new MacBook Pros this year for all the developers in the audience." And when they show them on screen, there's no touch bar, and we and like we can just we can just move right past that. I actually think that they've walked into an easy way to get rid of this thing. There is a lot of 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 consternation right now about the quality and reliability of the keyboard on the MacBook Pro. There are lots of problems. Um, and and it's it's kicking up quite a bit of dust uh, in the in, in kind of the enthusiast industry. Like people are very upset at these keyboards. I, I literally had one break on me this morning. There you go. Uh, getting ready for the show. I had a, I had a key break this morning while I was getting ready on uh, my adorable. I was like, oh, here we go. Um, so I think that what whenever they get ready to show off the new keyboard, because they have to be working on a new keyboard at this point, they just show it off like, and we've made this wonderful new keyboard that does this and it does this and it does this, and the touch bar is just gone, like it's mm-hmm. just gone. 
and you don't ever pay attention to it or they don't need to call it out because they have a new keyboard and the touch bar is part of the keyboard. The keyboard is all new and it's amazing because of this. And as part of that new keyboard is no touch bar, job done. And they fly away into the ether. And oh, by the way, we had a face ID, <laughs> right? Like, and then that's it. Yeah. That's, I didn't I didn't think of connecting those two dots, but yeah, you're right. They, they do have a way to walk out of it, which is to be able to talk about their amazing new keyboard. Right, because they could just be like, we had to go back to the drawing board and completely re-engineer what the keyboard means for the MacBook Pro. That's how I would do right. it if I was in that yeah. situation. Because you have this perfect out for both things, like where you kind yeah. of hint at, but don't particularly, like you put all of the blame on the touch bar. Right. Right. By like, oh, we had to go back to the drawing board because of that darn touch bar. Nothing to do with it. Right. But like you, <laughs> you're like, oh, you scamp, you ruin the keyboard for everyone. Right. And, and <laughs> even though like the same problems exist even on the Macs without the touch bar, but they have the new keyboard. Right. But yeah, you can. Like my adorable. You know, yeah. Or like my, I have a MacBook Pro. I was using it a couple of days ago and two of the keys started clicking in a very strange way. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the beginning of the mm-hmm. end right there. Mm-hmm. But I use it only like twice every year, so I can stretch that thing out. That's I think that's a, that is a a genius marketing move there. That Apple, if you're listening, you should totally totally take that one. That's the way to talk about it. Some of the it. keynote slides. There you go. Yeah, I want, you can take that one for free. <laughs> some guys crossing out the picture of their new MacBook Pros with touch bars. Okay. <laughs> no MacBook Pro, and then it's like, quick, we got to add some do not disturb slides. Ah, uh, right, <laughs> add it in, add it in. All you need to do is just in the keynote say the word banana and we will know, right? Right. Did you say banana and we'll know, you know, that's all you need to give us as a thanks. Good. I like that. I like that. <laughs> so to go back, like, wh- why do I think it's the year of tumbleweeds, even though we're, we've been discussing all these things that we want, is there where was, was, I can't remember if it was a leaked memo or it was a rumor that Apple is is switching to this longer two-year schedule for thinking about features in each of the operating system releases it was was kind of a bit of both it was apparently um an internal meeting Hmm. that that the the topic of which made it made it to outside all right so years and years ago when Apple switched to the yearly schedule I, I remember thinking at that time like oh I don't think this is a good idea uh it will surprise no one who follows my work to know that <laughs> I, I do not think that schedules make things better. Uh, I think there's a way that schedules can really make things worse because then it becomes about the work meeting the schedule as as opposed to other things. And I always really liked that Apple had new versions of Mac OS when it was ready and Sometimes it would be big and sometimes it would be small, but it wasn't it wasn't on a regular schedule. And I always thought like, oh, that's why it's so good, because they're not under this. Pre- and they're like, oh, we're going to have Mac OS on an annual schedule. And it's like, oh, no. And, you know, the Apple of now is a very different company from the Apple of 10 years ago. And I don't think it would be possible for them to switch to a no schedule uh, system anymore. It's, it's just out of the question. But... The idea that they're going to expand their horizon to pro- like projects can take two years as opposed to taking one year and that if you're building for that, it allows them to change the scope of what's going to happen in any particular year and move things back more easily. And you can see how organizationally you can make it less of a disaster if things have to get pushed back for two years if you're already thinking on a two year timeline. And I, I really hope that this is something that Apple is deeply internalizing because there have been some of the strangest, weirdest bugs, particularly on my iOS devices this, this last round. And like, <laughs> I, I have an example. Uh, I had like the weirdest personal bug, which also to me feels like a real disaster of a bug, something that hits something that is so core that this should never happen. But, Mike, you know how sometimes I travel and I want to stay on gray master time. Yeah. I don't, want to, I don't want to change. This is a thing that's become a semi-regular part of my life in travel. Um, but guess what? Ever since the latest version of iOS, when I go into my phone, I press the switch to say phone, 
stay on London time. Don't don't switch to West Coast time because I am going to live my life on London time. Well, whenever I fly, guaranteed the phone switches that setting back randomly at random points in time. And that's the kind of bug that it feels like it's so core to the system, like something is screwing with how the phone keeps track of time. Yeah. And it's it's flipping a preference switch back when I'm not looking. And everybody has something like that where, you know, obviously what I'm doing is a weird edge case, but it shouldn't happen. And I know too many people with too many weird edge cases And so I feel like I'm very happy if Apple takes a slower approach and says, okay, there's going to be like, we're going to spread stuff out over two years. We're going to make sure that stuff is more baked before it ships. But what that does mean is the first time you switch to a two yearly schedule, the very first year, it's going to have to be a quieter year. And so... If this WWDC is tumbleweedy, they come and like do not disturb and notifications is their big we can show you feature. And then there's like maybe not a whole lot more. I will actually I will I will do my best to internalize that as a good sign that Apple is going to try to have a longer time horizon and let things more fully bake before they get shipped out. I just had a thought that. I haven't heard anybody say, and it seems it seems obvious to me now that I'm thinking it, something doesn't have to be done for you to show it. And if they want to say that they're moving to a longer development schedule, they don't have to then not show anything. Like, we're very used to them showing us in June what's going to ship in September... Mm-hmm. But they could show us in June what's going to ship in March. Possibly. Uh, I mean, I think there's... If I was advising Apple, I would probably tell them not to do that. I would take the PR right, hit on the a thing quiet is, year, though, but it's possible. They do this anyway, right? Where they, they show things in June and then they don't ship for a year. <laughs> still waiting for my air power. Back, exactly. <laughs> um, we're still waiting for AirPlay 2 and we're still waiting for messages in the cloud. None of these <laughs> things were shipped and they were shown last June. So like there is, they could say like we're going we're gonna to go on a, on a two-yearly release cycle, but over the next year, we're planning on releasing these features. I don't know. Yeah, it's a possibility. It may be. I don't know. So then at least they have more to show, even though less will ship in September. I I think at the very least, if they're going to announce messages in the cloud or or, or features like that, uh, they should be even even more vague with their dates than they currently are. Well, they need to be more sure. (laughs) They need to be more sure that it can happen. I don't know what happened with those two features. Like, nobody really knows knows. Something really bad happened with those two features. I think it is AirPlay 2 and Messages in the Cloud is why one of the big reasons why we're getting this slower release, potentially, is because they announced these features and they couldn't ship them for whatever reason. Yeah, whatever happened is bad. Uh, And what's extra funny is the other day, my iPhone was was showing a banner on the bottom of, of iMessages saying, iMessage is in the cloud, like not working correctly. I was like, what What are you doing, iPhone? There were all these strange remnants of this stuff supposing to have shipped by now, and they just like appear in these random places. They're like, it's like the ghost of messages is like haunting yeah. your phone. <laughs> yeah. But that's like another great example of like, maybe, maybe wait until stuff is fully baked before you start trying to shove it in. And then, it, and then like, oh no, we can't clean it out properly. And you're going to get weird messages about it for a year. 